everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this week's episode of When I Grow Up. On today's episode, I'm excited to introduce you guys to my friend, Lydia Yoon. Hey, Lydia, how are you? Hi, everyone. Thanks so for coming excited. on. Yes, thank you for having me. It's such an honor、um, that you agreed to even do this with me.、Um, for those of you that don't know who Lydia is,、um, you should. Because she's an incredible person,、um, a great friend. And more than that,、um, she is just okay. Well, actually, the reason she's here today、um, is because today we're talking about being,、um, being a mom. But in particular, being a homeschool mom. Lydia is a homeschool mom of three beautiful girls.、Um, actually, will you tell me a little bit about your family? Yeah. So my husband is John,、um, and、uh, I have three girls. First is Adeline. We call her Addie. She is eight and a half years old. Oh my gosh, I just can't. <laughs> I can't. Crazy. That's、uh, crazy. And then my middle child is Hadassah. We call her Dassa, age six. And、um, our youngest is Maya, and she is two and a half. Which is also crazy. Yeah. <laughs>、um, so I, I'm mainly homeschool the older two while giving, you know, the youngest like activities, you know, that she can keep busy with. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm so curious about all of those things. And we're definitely going to dive into、um, those types of questions about, like, how do you keep your other children busy? And I guess I'm kind of like a little bit. More excited because I, for those of you that are just joining us, I have two kids of my own、um, Eli, who's four years old, and Zoe, who is、um, two and some months old.、Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I have some personal questions, you know, and curiosities about homeschooling and how Lydia does it. And before we jump into her story, I just want to share, you know, Lydia is also,、um, like I mentioned, not a Not just a good friend, but we are ministry partners.、Uh, we, she's been in, how long have you been in Atlanta now? Three, more than three years. Wow. Man, I feel like time just、It's、flew、crazy. by. My goodness. Crazy. Um, and um, her and my husband have had several opportunities to、uh, lead worship together.、Mm. Um, and also, Uh, David's David, produced my music. Yeah, produced a few <laughs> songs for Lydia as well. Oh, more than a few. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> everything. He's, out, he's done、know? everything. <laughs> Shameless plug for Lydia's、yes. husband. But、um, yeah, and so I'm, I'm just excited to hear this part of your life, Lydia, because I feel like I don't ask enough, you know, because it's just like your everyday.、Mm -hmm. um, and Guys, today, I mean, there are so many aspects of being a mom, like a stay at home、mm -hmm. mom. And、um, I know this is not your typical, like, quote unquote, career.、Mm -hmm. However,、um, I mean, I would say, you know, the, <laughs> the, there's no monetary value to being a mom, <laughs> but the value is very great. You know, it's,、yes. very, it's very high. And so,、um, I'm going to try to stick to the topic of homeschooling.、Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if we organically go somewhere else, that's cool too, Lydia.、Um, so, yeah, so just tell I, what I want to know is right off the bat、mm -hmm. is what does a typical day for you look like for, like for you and your girls? Yeah. So we'll wake up typically around eight and then we will. Um, just slowly <laughs> have breakfast. And、um, we've actually changed up our schedule just a little bit. We have worship time and prayer time before we start homeschool now. So that's been really great.、Um, and then、uh, after that, so I wasn't completely honest. I don't homeschool both of them. <laughs> well, the oldest, she basically does it herself <laughs> because it's an online curriculum and she's an avid reader. And so once, once you get to the point of reading, and、um, that's kind of like the beauty of homeschooling, it teaches you how to self teach. And、uh, like she's very good at taking in information on her own. And so she'll read most of the new things that she is coming across.、Um, and then I just basically check her work, <laughs> if that, <laughs> and you know, also help her to understand. But so Addie will be doing her. 
uh, her homeschooling. And so I'm mainly sitting down with DASA. They're two also very different types of learners. And so I'm using two different curriculum. So Addie is doing an online curriculum and I'm doing, um, it's called My Father's World. It's a, um, oh no, I'm blanking out on what the the teaching style is, but it's like using these living books and it's a mixture of classical education. So it's, it's got like a little bit of everything. Um, but Dasa really kind of took to this curriculum, which is very tactile mm -hmm. and she's very creative, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I sit down with her and I mainly homeschool her. She's the only one that I'm really giving all my attention to and actually have to like sit down and teach. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so as I'm doing that, I'm giving... Maya, some busy work with like uh, more educational. She's two, you know, so it's, it's, she'll keep busy with like water play or, um, you know, like threading, like beading, whatever it is. Um, and then we are usually done before lunch or by lunch. And so 10 to 12 is the time lot that I have uh, designated for the girls. Um, that's including the worship and prayer aspect. And so, um, and I know like a lot of people kind of question that, but I've actually confirmed and I'm also like a partially education major. And, and so when I, uh, having student taught and did my hours um, and, t and talking with my friends in school um, who are teachers, right, in the public school education, both in New York, Georgia, it's like that two hour of sit time with one student is more than a student would intake for an entire week because you don't know what uh, what the teacher's outputting in, from the front, whether that is actually inputting into the student. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the time is, it could be just general, you know, student management, all of these things. Um, and so it, it is really adequate. I guess I just want to ensure that in terms of like the hours mm -hmm. and and also many many people kind of have the misunderstanding like oh if I have to homeschool like eight to three what am I going to do <laughs> you know but the beauty of it is that you don't have to do that and, and so we're done for the day by lunch so we have lunch and then you know sometimes I will put the younger one to sleep in that time Addie and Dasa are usually usually having their quiet time which is you know, either one hour of iPad <laughs> or, you know, reading or doing whatever they, they want to be doing. So, um, and that's it. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. <laughs> and then we, yeah, it's other stuff, but that's like all optional extracurricular things. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you say that's it, but I'm like, no, that's not it. That's no. a lot. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, Lydia. Um, no, no, so, not at all. I mean, like, so you mentioned that Addie teach, like self teaches right mm -hmm. now, and she's eight, right? Yeah. Oh, gosh, which again, I can't believe you've been a parent for eight years, and I, I say this not. because you and I are the same age. So right. <laughs> but um, um, before that though, like before Addie could read and stuff like that, yeah. mm -hmm. were there challenges in? having both Dasta and Addie and teaching them together? Yeah, so that that I had for one year. Hmm. But even into the year, she started reading on her own. And so she would read the teacher's curriculum book and like do it herself. <laughs> uh, so that was by like maybe the end of that year. And then the following year, she would just, yeah, do it on her own. Mm -hmm. But in that time, what what I found was that as I was uh, giving my attention to Dasa, that there were ac enough activities. And actually, she still joins in sometimes enough acti activities that I could kind of um, like tweak for her level that was still interesting to her. And uh, mainly like the crafts and things, because those things kind of dwindle as you grow older, you know, and it's like, yeah, where did all that go? Yeah. <laughs> and so I think it was good. It was good for them to kind of partake in each other's. And even now, like Addie has a physical education portion in her curriculum. Oh. And so we do that all together, like that's all of us fun. together. Yeah. And that's fun. And it's stuff you can do it just at home, like, you know, 100 jumping jacks and things. <laughs> really intense <laughs> but they love it and so um I think that uh yeah that uh, probably the hardest part for me was when Maya just started to walk mm. and then she was like requiring my attention that was a little bit more 
lot, lot, a lot more distractions, interruptions. Um, but that was a short season. I think a good maybe what six months, hmm. and then she kind of like a, a, a da- adapted to that too. Sure, like yeah. in the schedule of your lives and stuff. Right, like that. right. And she realized yeah. probably that oh. My sisters do this, and so yes. I should be doing this too. Right, Which right. Just so beautiful, right? Is like that. they're so smart like that. Um, yeah. As long as we're firm, they will. They will eventually have to. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you mentioned that also your oldest does online um, mm-hmm. curriculum, yeah. and what does that look like? Like, is there a teacher, or she's just reading and doing the work, or mm-hmm. so the one that I use is called Easy Peasy Curriculum. It's actually free, completely free. She, wow. This mother, uh, also hom- homeschooling mother, she put together. She put it together herself by like, like threading all these online resources, and then what's amazing actually, you can add or remove like certain um, subjects, and so there's everything like geography, uh, like every type of science math, reading, writing, uh, computer, you know, physical ed- education, as I said, uh, different type. Yeah. Like I said that already, like zoology, like oh, there is a wow. particular one. That's why Addie is so, <laughs> she loves her animals and she knows more animal facts than I do. Legit. Like, she does. I, she really does. I, it's kind of scary. <laughs> and I just believe her now. She can say yeah. anything and I'll believe, <laughs> yeah, that's true about giraffes, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And so, uh, Oh, let's see. Yeah. So she, she, most of it is she clicks on the t- topic mm-hmm. and then it'll give you the lesson for the day, mm-hmm. um, whether it's addition and sometimes it'll lead it, lead you to like a YouTube video or something oh, that will okay. introduce it. Um, sometimes it'll just be written out plain, just, um, yeah, in instructions. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and they'll, sometimes they'll have print out worksheets. Uh, along with that so it it really depends on the day and the lesson okay yeah so like okay so another thing that I've been thinking about with homeschooling Mm -hmm. is you know like there's a lot of programs right now that are virtual like you know and um you can get off like I mean they're like there's like uh, one called Pumo now I don't know if you heard of that but like mm-hmm. there's a, and the, where there's like a teacher virtually teaching your kids yeah. I mean do you have any opinions about that I don't know why because like you know I feel like we a lot of like pediatricians and just specialists that are specializing in education tell you to limit your screen time mm-hmm. and things like that so I I think my headspace is like oh like is that okay for them right. To be in front of the screen all that time. But then again, COVID has, prov- you know, provided this whole other <laughs> yeah outlook on education and how I should be thankful for technology, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah. So I was very iffy about that with Addie at first, too, because, yeah, I mean, it, it is extended screen time. Um, but w- I noticed that she just be able to receive the information so much better mm. um she's just like that i don't know she's definitely like her like her dad like mm. john um she's very techie um and so for me the prior priority was her education in terms of the input of of um what she was learning and so when i found that she actually enjoyed it so much more mm. i just kind of let her be and then because it was working so well, I actually tried to change uh, Dasa's curriculum to that, but she like completely shut off. Oh, God. And that's when I knew, wow, like these are, I mean, they're already such different human beings. <laughs> right. But right. even in their learning styles, it was like so completely different. And so I, I just also am thankful for the opportunity that I, I get to see that, you know, I get to yes. see it and then to um, fill their needs accordingly. And um, I know that sounds like a lot, but it really isn't it's like you know like when we put our children into a system perhaps like it's just a a, a one square peg and you have to fit into it but then and and then like it doesn't work sometimes Mm -hmm. but the you would think that it's easier for you just to have one style and then just fit everybody uh, into it but then can you imagine trying to put like a square peg into a circle hole right right like it makes it harder for you if you're if you're true 
your goal is for this child to learn and to grow and to develop, then right. it's like, that's not actually easier for you. Mm -hmm. It's easiest to find the way that they learn best and then to give it to them. And like, look at me, like, I don't have to teach Addie. Right, <laughs> right, sense, right. You know? um, and I'm really uh, like, yeah, I, I'm I'm really proud of her for that, mm. that she has come to a place where she is self-motivated. Like, that's so big, like self-motivated to learn. I know that's like huge. So much, yeah, yes. I know. Like we lose so much of that in the public school system because we don't teach that. We don't foster that mm -hmm. within the children. It's just a, you know, just like, again, fit, every, everyone fits the model. It's like this mass system. And so, uh, and I don't, not to say that I'm completely against public education. Like I'm a public you know, education product. <laughs> and I did well, I, I did well, you know, it fit me. Um, but I'm just saying for, um, in terms of like being able to know for your own children, and you could still do that even as you're sending them to public school, right? Just, it just takes a little bit more intentionality in terms of figuring out who they are and then, you know, just giving them what they need. Yes, absolutely. No, I completely hear you. And I, I personally don't take any offense to that um, at <laughs> all. Um, I, you know, and I, again, I think if I weren't a mom myself, you know, mm. I would have different opinions. However, thinking about my own children, I can make it a little more personable what you're saying because, mm. you know, uh, what you're describing about Addie, your first child, is similar, I think, to my first child, Eli, mm. too. Mm -hmm. And um, so as you're talking, I'm like, yes, like... <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't disagree with the fact that, yeah, school, because of its structure is necessary for the system mm -hmm. to work, you know, and, and I get that. Um, and I too, I am a public school product and mm -hmm. I, and I did fine, you know, and everything mm -hmm. is fine, but, you know, and then it's like, but what if, you know, like, what if? I did homeschool or, you know, those kind of things kind of come to mind as you're talking. Mm -hmm. And um, what a special opportunity as a mom to, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, just to reiterate, like to witness your children, um, their strengths. I don't want to, I don't want to call them weaknesses, but yeah, mm -hmm. definitely things that they're, they're, they're stronger at mm -hmm. and they are more, um, more able to benefit from, right? Yeah. And I think it's really special that you're in that kind of place where you can observe all those things. Yes. And make decisions. I'm thankful Anyways, for it. <laughs> I want to know more. So, like, take me back to the beginning, would you, Lydia? Mm -hmm. Like, when, I, I mean, like, were you like, I'm going to be a homeschool mom from like, like the beginning or like, how, how did you come to this place where you decided you're going to homeschool your children? Yeah. Um, let's see. I think the first time that I came across the idea was through a, uh, a friend, uh, an, a, an, a slightly older friend, but he's, man, to think of it, um, his name is John. Uh, and he's, uh, yeah, he's just like all over the world, but he would come by to our hometown and he would talk about um, homeschooling. He would talk about um, just just kind of like he would really challenge our Christian ideals <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, kind of like bringing it back to just our mandate and um, yeah, what we believe in and what we want for our children. And so it really came from that place of faith. You know, I can't, I can't tell this story without, you know, without mm -hmm. it. Um, and so he would talk about things like, so what does it look like to like disciple our children? And then it really, so that was like, I think when Addie was very young and so it was still kind of ir irrelevant at that point, but mm -hmm. it was a seed in my mind. And then we moved to Kansas City um, where we were there for as missionaries for three and a half years. But during our DTS, our discipleship training school, um, they have a week where they 
um, the base leader, his name is Mark Anderson. He just talks about biblical worldview and he just challenges like everything you think is normal, everything that you've grown up in the secular mindset that has been like completely ingrained. And he starts like to appeal all these layers. And in that he does um, just flat out just talks about how we, <laughs> how we have kind of forfeited our call as parents um, to disciple our own children, both mm-hmm. to the secular education system and then to the religious system, right? Secular education system during the week <laughs> and then the church religious system on the weekends. And, um, and then he just started going through the Bible verses just like, just plain and simple what the mandate is for parents, like how we ought to raise them. You know, it really was, I think, Psalm 1 that he went to uh, into deep um, Mm. study with about like, blessed are those who do not sit in the council of the wicked, things like that. And I was just kind of like, whoa, interesting, Mm. you know? And he's like, yeah, you, you put the, you put our children like for their primary hours of alertness and learning under secular education and then you wonder why they come out the way they do you know and I was like oh interesting (laughs) but honestly even still it was so daunting and there were so many homeschooling moms around me in that community like Kansas City is like a booming homeschooling community it's like amazing their resources are great but then as a new mom I look at that and I'm like I don't know you know, I just, right. I don't know, you know, I'll try, <laughs> I'll dabble here and there, but it just always was, I always felt like I had to like catch up, you know, and never felt like I could really do this, you know? And so I, I guess that, that was the beginning of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I, I tried it when I started trying it when Addie was three and a half, uh, which are not like really, really formative educational years and so I was just like okay let's just do this for fun because you know I'm playing with her all day anyway it's like nice to have written out activities for me to actually do with her yeah and so I enjoyed it that was my like toe in the water thing and we both enjoyed it Mm -hmm. it actually relieved a lot of even the time that I spent with her Mm -hmm. to be more intentional and then to be um filled with something you know because the books literally write out for you what activity to do even what to say (laughs) like during the activity things like that um so because we both enjoyed it I think we continued we did have an off year when we came here and Addie went to kindergarten um at a a church uh, a Christian church program um where she learned to read and so that was amazing <laughs> like that really helped me a lot right, and that was also right. when I was pregnant with the last one with Maya so oh. yeah that's how it started <laughs> man okay so after you uh, realized that you enjoyed it with Addy it's kind of did you find yourself then making a definitive decision or was it like I'm gonna just continue until I can't um, yeah, I think it was the latter. Okay. Because again, it's not like I was doing it from a place of confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, I just had started it. And then looking ahead, I'm like, I don't know that I could do everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to do what I can, you know, and it was literally a day day to day thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yeah, I didn't even do it faithfully probably every single day. I don't even know if I even finished that first curriculum with her, <laughs> honestly. But I still have it. We might, we're going to be using it as a Sunday school curriculum, right? <laughs> Just as you have. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it was more of just like, let's see how far I can take this thing. And okay. kind of like wanting to pray about it also year to year. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned before that you do have an ed- like uh, education in um, teaching mm-hmm. and education. Is that right? Yeah, so it's I, I was in applied linguistics field, so it wasn't like primary primarily education, but it's like a K through twelve thing teaching English to speakers of other languages, TESOL. Oh. Um, and so I did have a lot of hours of observation and student teaching and all that stuff. Um, but then when I think about it, honestly, I don't know how much that that has really formed my 
my homeschooling. Okay. That's uh, I, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to give ease to anybody who's not an education major. Um, maybe if I was doing like English to speakers of other languages, uh-huh. I would be using more of what I know in terms okay. of linguistics. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't see... I don't I don't feel like I'm pulling from that information bank, you know, that I uh-huh. had from like undergrad years. Um I don't I don't think I'm pulling from that. <laughs> okay, cuz I was like I mean, I feel like that would be an advantage, you know, uh-huh, like to have uh-huh. that kind of background, but mm-hmm. for you to say that is actually um I feel like, you know, to anyone that's thinking about homeschooling, be encouraged cuz you mm-hmm. don't need to a background in teaching right yeah so you're for saying. sure yeah. I mean I maybe it's because I just have terrible memory no like, <laughs> I should really be using it more for myself but um yeah it just seems and it, it, it just these things are so I, I don't know they're they're very natural I feel like the children know what you know what know yeah. what to do and you kind of just like follow their lead at the same time and like the material isn't hard <laughs> right so you know I guess like kind of um general things like positive reinforcement uh-huh. i don't know if you have to learn that you know i feel like that's a natural thing right right, right? that right. you just you just yes. you know compliment them yeah. and, <laughs> you know and so i sure i if i can if i force myself to relate it to psychological <laughs> terms i can say oh yeah sure i'm doing that right, but it's right. not because i learned about it in an okay. undergrad you yes. know what i mean yeah yes. <laughs> course okay so like you know you talked about positive reinforcement just now and I'm like as far as like um do you I know you mentioned Addie's very good at self-motivating herself to to learn the curriculum um but do does Dasa ever is she ever like not today no thank you Mm. Hmm. (laughs) or either of the any of the girls yeah um um, actually, Addie had more trouble in the earlier days mm-hmm. because she was in, again, she did that year in kindergarten and she's so much more socially driven. And so she would actually do really well in a classroom setting. She does. Um, but it did take a while for her to get to this place. And I think it was because when something felt daunting and she's still a little bit ha- struggles with this, when something feels daunting, then she kind of shuts down. Mm-hmm. And so I had to learn how to uh even like it's kind of difficult as a mother (laughs) right to like come out of that mother position and like focus more as an educator at that time because if I stay as a mother I'm just annoyed (laughs) I'm just like come on like what what's so hard about this and honestly I made those mistakes because I'm sorry, our firstborns just get all the mistakes. <laughs> they just get all the mistakes. And she's been so gracious with me, you know. Um, and so I've I've had to learn, you know. At first, I was, I think, more harsh on her because, like, I, I expect more from her in a sense because she's smart, because, you know, she's capable. But then I realized, okay, I can't take that route. Like, it really is squashing her confidence. And, like, she doesn't even want to try. And, and so I... I kind of like had to yeah come out of that mother role <laughs> and just look at her as a student and be like okay what does she need like if it was anybody else's child how would I right, right. how would I be talking to her in this moment mm. and how would I motivate them and it 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 changed my tone you know it changed the way that I um uh, engage her at the moment in in the moments of her like pulling back and not wanting to do it um, and so I think for the sake of the long-term enjoyment of learning, I think sometimes we can really kind of back down on the educational goals, like the academic goals, and just kind of like foster that. Because really, again, at the heart of it, like if they love to learn, that they can go so far. Mm-hmm. You know, they can go anywhere if they love to learn. And so I think that's my priority for them, that they grow this love for learning and the ability to learn on their own because again children are natural learners um then you know I think the other stuff come easy because you just you know it's just a matter of time um and just logistics yeah no all of that what you just said I 
great advice for every <laughs> on every level because you know that was my next question you know yeah. was um you know do you ever grow impatient oh, with your children yeah. I, in i mean not <laughs> in just this in just homeschool <laughs> No, I'm talking about homeschooling okay. all the time. <laughs> it's really hard not to be mom during homeschooling. Oh, man. So, I, I mean, even me, like, just a mm-hmm. small, like, keep the activities that we do to just stay busy because yeah. I'm not home, like, homeschooling, homeschooling per se. And I'm like, why are you doing it like that? <laughs> What is wrong? I mean, I I try hard not to verbalize it, but right. sometimes, you know, when you know they're like they're fighting, you know, mm-hmm. Eli and Zoe, and mm-hmm. they're bickering about some sibling situation. Yeah. I'm like, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, and and so, or you know, even just like teaching Eli, you know, something new or trying Mm. to, right? And he's like kind of and and again, it's so weird. I'm just having this revelation, like, oh, like I didn't know that your daughter was so similar in some ways to my son. Oh my gosh. And I just am like kind of shocked because I'm like, yes, like he feels that way too about things Mm. being like if it's too much or like Mm -hmm. he feels like he can't be perfect at it. Yeah. You know, he doesn't even want to put the effort. And I'm like, come on, man, let's get a grip here. (laughs) You know, like, yeah. But then at the same time, if I take a step back, that's me too. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm like that, like my Mm -hmm. personality and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I should be able to show him grace. But I think what you just said is like the Mm -hmm. biggest piece of advice for me in particular. Hopefully it helps someone else too that's Mm -hmm. listening. But just like removing yourself. Because like I'm, again, if you don't know, I'm a children's pastor for Mm -hmm. those that are listening. And I, not my kid, I, it's, it's fine. (laughs) No big deal. You know, (laughs) I can talk to them about it. So much grace. Yeah. I don't, there's a lot of grace. Like Mm -hmm. I don't get frustrated, but for some reason when it's my child, I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay like you know and get a little bit irritated Mm -hmm. and um and all the moms probably said yes I'm hoping they're agreeing with us but (laughs) but um but yeah so I think what you said too about just yeah having your to remove yourself a little bit Mm -hmm. and realize that if they love to learn Mm -hmm. it's the best best situation yeah do you have like, any like thoughts about like even just people that are listening that are in the public school system right now mm-hmm. and they're like, I don't love learning. Like, mm-hmm. like you know, like what would you say to them? Oh, man. Like Sorry for the parents this. of children yes. that are experiencing that? Sure. Yeah. I do have a lot of young listeners, too. So I was just. Mm. Oh, for oh, the students themselves. The students themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say find something you love, (laughs) right? And like anything that you find, you will have to learn about it, but then it doesn't feel like learning Mm. because you love it, you know, and you're so intrigued by it. Maybe you don't love it. Maybe you're just interested in it. But again, I think like when you've been forced to just do and to produce and to take tests and all that stuff, like you, you, we probably feel like we don't have the leniency to be able to pursue those things. And it's such a, such a far option that it's like, by the time you're done with your schoolwork, by the time you have to do everything that you've done, like, why would I want to put my effort into that? Mm -hmm. But then that, whatever piques your interest, right? The things that are effortless, like that's what's going to help you come alive. Mm. That's what's going to help you find your purpose, like your niche and your, you know, just like what you're, how you're wired. And yes. like, I feel I, I, like I'm mo- like some, that's one of the deepest sorrows that I have for the young generation that they've been robbed of the, that opportunity. And now they don't even know. And I actually, I can resonate with it even for myself, like come, when it came to college, right? And now I have to choose my major. Or even after that, it's like, wait, what makes me tick? What what do I love? What do I want to do for the rest of my life? And that's why you're you're on this pod, you made this podcast. Yeah. Because I mean, there are so many people who go through that 
that process and still come up like, I don't know. And it's really because we haven't been given those opportunities to dream. Mm -hmm. And if it hasn't been given to you, then you have to give it to yourself. You have to create it for yourself and you have to allow yourself to go there. And sure, it might be extra mental effort at first, but I promise you it'll be worth it for the rest of your life that you would find something that makes you spark, right? Mm -hmm. And that you would find something that makes you feel alive. Like, whoa, I think I'm actually made to do this. Like I'm born to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think everyone needs that. You know, it's just, it's, I don't know. I just want that for everyone. <laughs> no, yes, absolutely. I completely agree. And you're right. It's it's part of the reason I had this desire to create this platform for those that are in different careers. Because um, fortunately enough for, for me and this podcast, I have been able to find guests that truly <laughs> love what they do, That's you awesome. know, and are passionate about it. And um with the hopes of people listening to feel inspired by not what they do, but their passion for what they do. Yeah. You know? And to know that it's possible to find things in your life mm -hmm. that you love and um, be good at it, you know, and just just run with it, whatever it might be. So, yeah, I mean, it's so simple what you just said. What, to the answer to my question, you know, like, what would you say to someone that doesn't like learning? But and what you said is so simple, but so profound. <laughs> Find something that you like to do. Yeah. And yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Well, we can just end it. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, but yes, I feel like with that piece of knowledge and wisdom is, if you take anything away from this time, I feel like mm -hmm. that would that's that's really what it's all about, mm. you know, pursuing your purpose. Yeah. And um, yeah, you and I, I know we we are on the same page when it comes to that for mm -hmm. um, this generation and the next. Mm -hmm. So um, but yeah, I. Sorry, I keep thinking about things as you're talking and, yeah, go ahead. you know, you were mentioning that uh Addie is very social and mm -hmm. she enjoys like um, being around a lot of people and she would probably thrive in a classroom setting. Mm -hmm. um, how do you like, you know, but with that, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. Yeah. And so I know I know your family personally. I know that you guys are around a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, Addie, ha Addie Dasta and Maya have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, how do you feel about her not her not being in that social setting day to day in the classroom? Like, yeah, do you have any just personal thoughts or? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess earlier on when she was struggling with learning on her own, I did wish she had more of that peer, um, I guess, like peer influence, like, you know, the herd mentality, right? Yes. So everybody else is doing it. So you have to do yes. it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I, actually, once we overcame that, I'm actually very glad that she's not getting the other side of the peer influence, which is you, God knows what, yes. you know, God knows what, especially <laughs> now what she would be in third grade. And that's just scary to me. <laughs> like, um, even for myself, back in the day, third grade was not uh, not completely innocent, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so I am actually glad for the even controlled uh, social and healthy environment that I can provide for her through friends that I know personally. Um so much of what I think uh, children receive within the um, uh, just like, you know, in any typical classroom setting is it, it's just like so just you just don't know. It's such a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. And I do I do believe in, you know, putting them in situation situations where they will learn to grow and adapt. And, you know, we can't honestly, we can't, you know, uh, guard them from everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I think especially for the elementary years, I have um, decided for myself and for my children uh, with their permission also, though, because I, 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 I talk and pray with them when they are able to understand mm -hmm. that they have the option. 
Um, and so Addie too, she, she was open to both. Uh, options. And then I told her, let's pray about again, pray, pray about it again, when we settle down, which we finally have, <laughs> you know, we're in, we're going to be in this house for the long haul, um, God willing. <laughs> yes. um, and so, um, so we decided together, you know, that she would, she would be doing homeschooling continually up until this year. And, um, yeah. And so I don't feel like she's missing out much mm. because again, she does have the continual touching base with friends and her peers. Um, and then it's not like it's without the very, I don't know, things that I d would not want her to be exposed mm. with. So I'm kind of glad about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I just wanted to know what you um, we're thinking mm -hmm. and thank you for being so transparent. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I think, you know, and again, um, I think just on a personal level for myself too, you know, mm -hmm. I've been contemplating these, uh, different scenarios and thoughts with homeschooling now that Eli is going to pre-K soon. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like I have to make some major decisions here when, mm -hmm. when it comes to his education. And, um, you know, th that kind of thought comes to mind. Like, I know Eli loves people mm -hmm. and, and is so outgoing and very social. And, you know, I, I kind of worry about those kind of things. But hearing your perspective and what you're saying is... Um, I mean, again, if we weren't friends, it might be different, right? Because, because, but I trust your opinions and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I know where, um, where you stand in your faith too, and trusting God. Yeah. So I, I value, you know, what you're saying. And I hope people listening to know, even if you don't know Lydia personally, you know, know that everything you're saying isn't without reason. <laughs> it's a lot of prayer and intention of, has gone into it. So, um, again, thank you for your transparency on that yeah. question. Um, oh, David and I, my husband, we were talking about like things that we would want to ask you, you know, yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And another, another thing that came up because he had just listened to your, um, oh yes. John and Lydia are also podcasters. They have a, <laughs> they have a podcast called Butt Honey and it's a mm -hmm. great premise. And, uh, the content of it is basically, um, yeah, two different sides of, of a topic Mm -hmm. And two different opinions. And the most recent one has been on technology, mm -hmm. right? And so David was like talking to me a little bit. I didn't get a chance to hear it yet, but mm -hmm. um, he was talking to me a little bit about what you were saying and about how te technology is affecting this generation mm -hmm. and things like that. And with this conversation came kind of the question of, you know, is there worry or stress or just kind of thoughts on say um Addy, Dasa, and Maya homeschool all throughout, right? Mm -hmm. Like um all the way till they're 18. Okay. Um is there some sort of like question about like I don't know how to, Okay, so you know, being placed in school where not everyone is for them. Mm -hmm. You know, there is going to be opposition or I don't want to use the word bullies, but like, you know, yeah. those types of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, I find value in facing those things. Right. Right. Where I where I personally cannot protect them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as and then, you know, they graduate high school and then they go to college. And then, I mean, that's still not the real world, but it's a little realer than what you are used to at home. Um, yeah. I mean, do you have thoughts on the fact that maybe your girls won't go through that kind of opposition. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what to call yeah. it. But do you get what I'm asking you? Oh, yeah, for okay. sure. Because, I mean, that's what I was touching on in terms of, um, like, uh, for now, I'm okay with them, with me filtering their environment for them so that they build a, a firm foundation in their foundation. education, in their, you know, worldview. But then I definitely want, I do value, as you were saying, uh, putting them in challenging situations where they learn uh, just from the ground. You know, mm -hmm. there's, they, you can't learn everything from information. Um, you have to experience it. Right. And so, um, 
I would think if, okay, it's kind of overwhelming to even think homeschooling to 18, <laughs> right? but if Sorry, I did, it is, it is when I said it, I was like, <laughs> oh, that's a long time. <laughs> if I did, I would actually expect them to have already had multiple, you know, jobs and internships mm. or, you know, like work at Chick-fil-A, you know, work, um, I don't know, something where they're regularly coming across regular, normal people who don't think like they do. Mm. Um, and so even, I, I don't know, a junior high, I guess, is a little bit more um, iffy, but I would want to put them in those situations, in those types of situ- situations. And so again, it's it, right now, I'm. it's kind of like almost a full-on filter <laughs> in terms of their environment, mm. but then slowly but surely, they definitely have to have enough exposure to the real world. Um, and then definitely for me too, challenging my own faith and trust in the Lord to, you know, have them, uh, have the Lord guide them through it and maybe not necessarily directly through, through me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yes, I, I think I would purposely put them in those situations by then. Like uh, hopefully they would have had plenty of, of those opportunities by the time they were 18. Yeah. But I didn't think about that, like putting them in like jobs and stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go work at the library or something, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. (laughs) Okay. That makes sense Mm -hmm. in my head. Um, Mm -hmm. So have you um, faced any like personal challenges I think you shared a little bit but like or any obstacles in your homeschooling journey so far Mm -hmm. um yeah I think the toughest part was just practically speaking was when I had to you know take care of Maya at the same Mm -hmm. time um and so just learning to be flexible and I guess that's okay that's good for the children too right they had to learn to be flexible (laughs) with me um and uh, let's see. Yeah. And then the whole like learning curve that we had to um, deal with Addie, you know, anything that Addie goes through, basically the first for anything right, is difficult. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and then more, I guess, personally for me, internally um, would have been something like whether... I don't know. It's like whether I have come to an agreement to my decision with myself. Mm. And and then even in that, kind of like not making what I'm expecting it to be the ultimate goal. Oh, that's hard. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? No, like, it makes <laughs> sense to me. I don't okay, know. <laughs> right. Okay. So then, okay, here, here's what it is. Okay. What I'm saying is, it takes so much to say yes, first of all, to make the decision. So that's one hurdle. And then when you've said yes, it, it, another hurdle is that you have to lay down. Well, you have to go for the expectation first. <laughs> that's another hurdle. Third one, you have to realize that expectation is not the goal. <laughs> right. So you have to oh. be able to lay that down. Okay. Right. And so I think all of that are, are challenges but it's they're such essential steps within the process of development as you as a homeschooling mother, you as an educator, I don't know, you can call or you as a human being, you know? And so like, I learned so much through it. I, I've said this to you so many times and you don't believe me, but I promise you guys, if I've, if I've, if I can do this, anyone can do this. No, I am I an old, don't believe you. <laughs> oh goodness. I wish, I wish you knew what my life looked like. Like I'm honestly, I, I'm so proud of myself. Mm. Like, it's funny to say that, but I look at myself and I'm like, wow, (laughs) like, wow, you, you really, you really got here, you know? And, and like, and that's not to my credit. I'm just saying like, I, I yielded enough. I feel like I, I surrendered enough. And I, in a sense, like I believed enough, I gave God enough for him to work something out for me. Hmm. And he changed me. 
like mm-hmm. little by little, even my lit, my tendencies, I'm, I'm a vision at heart. I'm a creative. Okay. Schedules don't do well with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> initially I'm saying like, initially I did not know how to keep time. Initially, I did not know how to keep my house you know, clean. Initially, I didn't know how to keep a schedule. Mm-hmm. I didn't know why you needed things like that. You know, I like what what's what are goals for? Just live every day. You know, like <laughs> you know, like that's who I was. It, it like prematurely. Mm-hmm. Then I could I I could have either settled and then built my life around what I'm comfortable with, or kind of venture out. You know, and and see what God has in mind. And like again, overcoming those natural inclinations I think is a big hurdle (laughs) right it's 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 definitely something that takes time takes faith takes effort you know and so I think more the 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 struggles for me the challenges for me were more internal than it was like you know the logistical practical things like those things work out for me as long as I have inner peace (laughs) like as long as I'm like confident that I am doing what I'm what I should be doing Mm. then even if it's hard even if I'm getting less sleep even if like I'm you know the child is giving me a hard time if I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing you know it's like it'll work out yes but it's it's when I'm not sure of myself and I don't have vision for what I'm doing Mm. and I don't know why I don't know how I don't I don't know anything you know you're just unsure and and wondering if this is working and all of that. And um, yeah, so I guess like those internal things really matter for me, at least. No, yeah, I think it would yeah. matter for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, thank you for um, letting us into that part of your obstacle and challenges, because I mm-hmm. feel like that's, I mean, you know, if you're thinking about being um, a homeschool parent, uh I mean, like you said, just saying yes mm. in itself is like, it's huge. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe the um, uh, people listening that aren't parents yet may not under, can, might, might not be able to completely wrap their heads around just saying yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, just wait. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it is that in itself. And then you're like, okay, I said yes. And then it's like, Mm -hmm. oh my goodness, what did I say yes to Mm -hmm. kind of thing? I feel, I feel, you know, at this moment in time. And um, I just, again, am so grateful for that you've gone ahead (laughs) of us, (laughs) those that are contemplating homeschooling to experience Mm -hmm. and be able to share uh, right now some of your wisdom. Um, I mean, I think it would be obvious, but I have to ask, like, what is the best part about homeschooling for you? Ah, man, that I get to directly experience their growth and development Mm -hmm. as human beings and that I get to taste of that, like, like, wow, I, I have some ownership in that. Yeah. And that's like, it's so satisfying. I don't know if, if, if moms can agree with this, but I just love breastfeeding, (laughs) but like, it's that feeling. It's like, wow, I can provide for my child, you know, like in, in the design that like God created for me, like, it's just, Mm -hmm. there's such a satisfaction in that. Um, yeah. And, and I, I just, I don't know, these days, especially it's just been so like, we, there's just been so much joy in the house. Um, they just, I don't know, they, they're such children are awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're, they're such gifts from the Lord and really just to be able to watch them grow gives me so much revelation for myself. And so I'm just thankful that I because not everybody gets that opportunity I understand you know people work and they're not able to like single moms you know the, like there are things that you need to take care of and so not everybody has the opportunity to do it um but I'm just yeah I'm really grateful for the opportunity yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely um so before we close our time together today Lydia do you have any 
advice for people that are listening that might be thinking about homeschooling their children or maybe like even young people that are like, mm. oh, this might be something I'm interested in for my future children. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just any advice um, on that topic or just any advice at all that you want to give. Yeah. The floor is yours, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um. I guess if you're interested in it at all, definitely get near it. Like, you know, again, I was I was um, fortunate enough to witness it before I stepped into it, you know, in the Kansas City community that we were a part of. Um, and so just connecting with, you know, other moms or, or just, you know, watching it happen, mm-hmm. even if it's from a far distance of like social media, YouTube stuff, like, you know, just getting near it um definitely doing some a little bit of research um but again for me I would not have done it with just those things like I had a conviction I had vision for why I wanted to pursue it and to even give it a try it wasn't even like okay I'm gonna do it you know I'm gonna accomplish this it was just it's just giving, you know, a little bit of faith every single day. Yeah. Um, and then I'm here. I'm like, what? <laughs> that, that's he really does it, you know, and he takes our little yeses and does crazy things with it. So mm-hmm. it's definitely possible. Um, yeah, but I guess discover your why um, and just witness it in the lives of other people and trust God yes I was telling Lydia before we started recording like man trusting God Mm. um it's weird how you can trust God with some things Mm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. and yet not be able to trust God with other things and I was um just in full disclosure you guys like Mm. as I've been contemplating this um this possible path of homeschooling mm-hmm. um, our children, I realized that trusting God in this decision was very difficult for me because mm-hmm. I feel like I lack so much too as a mother, right? Mm-hmm. And then will I be able to give them what they need? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I've been thankful to have you, Lydia, as a friend that has, again, experienced a lot of this. and. Um, thinking about some of the things that you've talked to me about in the past and again just realizing in the end it doesn't really matter you know the decision that I make Mm -hmm. I mean it does it does right (laughs) actually a lot of what you said today has (laughs) given me (laughs) more to think about right (laughs) In, in a good way in a good way but but you know do I trust, even if I decide not to homeschool Eli mm-hmm. and Zoe, that God will still, you know, do what he needs to do for them to be the human beings that they are are here to be on this mm-hmm. earth, you know? And um, I do with my mouth, you know, <laughs> but like in my heart, I don't know On if I'm again, if I'm honest, mm. I don't know if I've come to that place yet of like, because otherwise, why would I be so worried? You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but yes, that's just a little bit of me being fully transparent with yeah. everybody listening. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Beautiful. again, Lydia. Thank you again so much for coming on and giving me your time today um, in the busyness and the chaos, but also just um, being able to impart uh, these words of homeschool life, you know, Mm. as a mom and the struggles, the reality and the joys, Mm. of course, the joys. Um, If anyone has any questions, would it be okay for them to reach out to you? Of course. Yes. Um, Yeah. So guys, if you have any questions, I I cannot answer them, but Lydia can. (laughs) And so um, you can direct message me and I'd be happy to connect you. Um, Or you can email us at podcastwigu at gmail.com. Thanks Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Lydia, for being here. My pleasure. Until next time. Bye. Bye.